Now, how do we deal with this guy? Um, we saw before um, one of the ways of addressing the whole um, which which case of this function do you take when you're doing the absolute value? Do you have the positive side? Do you take the negative side? Or do you kind of end up with both, which we don't want? We saw you could deal with it last time when you had that semicircle. Do you remember? And we were saying, oh look, the whole semicircle is positive, right? So whichever portion of this that you take, you should end up with a positive value, right? So therefore, you kind of deal with that by saying, all right, well therefore the whole thing should be positive. Now, you have to be careful, because last time we could do that. Because this is what we ended up with. Do you remember that? Does that ring a bell? And you're like, cool, that thing's all positive. My original thing, which is this, is also all positive. So I say, cool, that's all I have to deal with, and then you go home, okay? This is somewhat more tricky, isn't it? Because have a look at this. For starters, well, okay, can we, what do you think? Can we make the positive argument with this shape? Yeah. Yeah. I think we can, can't we? I have no idea what this shape looks like. It's certainly not a semicircle, but that's going to be positive. Um, this, by definition, is going to be positive. So that looks good. But then, imagine what would happen if I just took the um, took the positive case. Okay. Um, let's just for the sake of argument, think about it over here. If I just take the positive case, this is going to be one over nine, one on sine squared. What will that become? I'm just taking the positive part, right, which is sec theta, and that sec theta is really actually a cos theta up here. Are you okay with that? All right, now, this is a problem for us. I'm not happy with that, okay? Because even though I made the argument, yeah, this thing's all positive, cool. There's no such easy argument with this shape, right? It's clear that this thing must be all positive. It's not at all clear that that's all positive, right? I can't make such a simple argument. So therefore, what I did before is not going to cut it for me. Okay, so I'm going to return back to something which I'm going to explain in a slightly different way, which is to introduce a restriction for theta. Okay, um, here I have, I have restrictions on x. Okay, but I'm not going to worry about them for now. I just want to see that there's x squared. That's what really matters to me. Here's the restriction I'm going to introduce on theta. I'm going to say let theta um, be sorry, yeah, tan theta. Let's see what yeah. I'm going to introduce this restriction, okay? Now, before you guys ask me, can you just do that? Like, is that, is that legit? I'm going to try and argue for, you for why, yes, we can, okay? And I'm going to need this later. Do you remember last time um, when you go ahead and you do all of the um, integration, we ended up with a cos theta last time. And you're like, how do I get rid of this cos theta? You had to draw a right angle triangle, okay? In other words, I'm implying this restriction. So if I want this restriction, if this restriction is like necessary for me to move forward, I need to know why it can work. Okay. So, let's think about this. If this is the case, why would this be a problem? Like, why wouldn't we want a restriction? Why would a restriction be problematic? Remember I said, this question has some, um, sorry, this, this integral here has some restrictions, right? What kind of restrictions do you see on this? X can't equal zero. X can't equal zero? So you can't have it equal. Yeah, okay, because I can't I don't want the denominator to be zero. Do you see any other restrictions on it? Wait, so on the top one, x can be negative. On this this guy here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to ask like what values of x can this work for, which implies the question, what values will break it? We've already answered with one. Um, namely I can't equal zero. zero. Are there any other restrictions? Not really. Yeah. Looks okay apart from zero, right? Which is a little bit different to what we had um, here. You remember this? This had this is much more restricted. Do you remember that? Where does this exist? It's a semicircle, right? Negative three. From negative three to three. Okay. So this is this is problematic because if you introduce a restriction here, right, that means you're only solving part of the problem, aren't you? Only solving this part. If this has like very few restrictions, and then you suddenly introduce one, then you're not really solving the original problem. You're like solving a sort of shrunk down version of the original problem. Okay. But here's the thing: this restriction actually does not restrict this at all. Let me show you how. Let me try and argue for you. Draw for me a really, really small graph, it doesn't, you're not going to have to make any arguments of it, of 10x, or rather 10 theta. Okay, we're going to do that. And someone can switch off their phone. Okay, 
So here's my simple um, graph of 10x. Uh, I've, I've drawn it in a very strange domain, you'll see why in a second. What I'm suggesting is that we restrict in here from there, I'm drawing a hollow circle, right? Because I actually don't want that value. Why don't I want that value? Because I actually can't be there anyway, right? I can't have x equal 10 theta, so therefore I don't need theta to be, I'm um, sorry, I don't have x equal 0, so I don't want 10 theta equal 0 either. So I'm leaving him out, and that's also handy for me because then I can draw a triangle with this thing, right? And then I'm saying, okay, well, you keep going all the way up until here, okay? Now, uh, the first thing I want to point out is, as Jinsu said, we're talking about really negative values, right? Negative values look like they're going to be a problem, yeah? Because look, if you want a negative value for, and this is a bit weird, but this is theta versus x. So x in this case is actually my vertical axis. You notice that? And it's a bit odd, okay? Odd. But what I want is if I'm if I'm thinking about how do I get a negative value of x? And you would think I need a negative value of theta to do it, right? Like it's suppose I was going to put in some boundaries like this. Um, from here to here, right? So you would think, oh well, x being negative 1, what value of theta do you think would be needed for that? Between 3. I need that an actual one. number, right? That it's going to be, well, here's, here's negative 1 down here. Come on, you guys know this is an exact pi value. Pi pi this pi is negative pi on 4, right? And you're like, wait, you just you just took that out of the um, domain. You just restricted me out of there. It does seem like it's a problem on the face of it. But it's actually not, right? Because look, if this value down here, negative 1, right? Negative one's never actually going to appear in my integrand, is it? Because have a look at the particular kind of function I've got. It's all squared. Do you notice that? These squares are going to come up again and again if trigonometric substitutions are involved because, I rubbed it off, in order to use them, you're going to get things squared. So you're using the Pythagorean identity in all kinds of different versions. Okay? So it's not just like a fluke that um, I'm using a trig substitution here and I've got squares here which make this really nice form. Being that everything is squared, I never actually need to worry about these values down here, right? If I wanted it, right? Um, let's let's pick a different value now. So let's say I went because maybe one's not actually not that interesting. Suppose I went down to say negative two. Okay, so that'd be somewhere down here. I have no idea what that value actually is going to be. Okay, but by the time he enters into this guy here, it's going to get squared. Yeah, it's going to get squared. So negative two or squared, it'll become four here. And then it'll become 4 there, right? So the question becomes to me, can I pick a value of theta that will give me that value of 4? And the answer is, yes I can, right? All I need, like, can I pick a value in, in here? All I need is something which is on the opposite side, because tan is what kind of function? Odd. It's odd, right? So it's like whatever angle that would have been, right? Actually, can someone do tan inverse of negative 2 for me? Just give me a number. We're in radians, yeah? 1 point. 1 point. It's going to be less than, or between 0 and negative 1.57, I guess. Oh, right. yeah, you got a number for me? Negative one. Yeah? Wow. That'll, that'll do. Okay. Now, if that's the value of theta, that would give me x equals negative 2. In order to make it work here, it's going to be equivalent if I say theta is positive 1.1, which is in this domain, right? This is 1.57-ish, so it checks out. Okay. So there are two things that I'm noticing. Number one, I can actually leave off the zero. Okay, that's all right. Number two, I don't need to get to here because like we just did it for negative two. I could do it for negative three or four or five or 500 because any value I want, look, 10 goes forever. Its range is all real values. So no matter what value of x you want, I can find a value of theta only in this domain that will give me the result I'm after. Okay? Like you tell me any x you like, right? put in any numbers you want, because this has no restrictions as we just pointed out, and I can find a theta that will satisfy it for you. You might start getting really close to pi on 2, because you might put in, you might give me some stupid large number, okay? But that's alright. That's the whole idea of an asymptote, right? That you can get you can get arbitrarily close to it. So I took you on a bit of a twisted turn there, right? I'm trying to justify this restriction. If I can justify this, then I can keep, take care of this absolute value and I can take just one of them, okay? And also I can do this, which I'm gonna to need to do. Uh, what have I got here? Tan theta is x on three. X on three. I'll be able to make this triangle later on, which I'm gonna need, 
because I can justify um, this restriction here, right? Yeah. So, like, if you do this in to answer a question in an exam, like, how do you justify that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you take this. And honestly, I would just draw the graph. You obviously don't need to sit there and write a few paragraphs about why da 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 Like this, this for me is the justification that any value of x you want, any value of x you want, I can give you a value of theta in this domain that will generate your value of x. Okay? And then you have to say that the yeah. graph is even because that's why you can stop the value of the negative. Not really. Now I know to make this a complete rigorous proof, you would. You'd have to talk through the stuff that I just talked through with you. But in reality, like now we're now we're coming down to like exam land, right? Like this is an important part of the proof, but it's not the part of the proof. I'm certainly not devoting three marks in my marking scheme to be able to say, yes, student has demonstrated, you know, this and this and this and this, right? There's not enough room in there. We at least just want you to say, hey. There's a restriction, that's why this absolute value, I can, I can just take one part of it. So I'm, I'm looking for you to deal with that, but I'm not looking for like all the nuts and bolts, okay? I, I want you to know the nuts and bolts so that it's not just, like I don't want you to think, where did this restriction come from? Like why do you do it? Because why, why can we do it? Because Mr. Wu said so. No, 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 there's geometric reasons as to why, okay? Wait, so is it different for every question? Um, no, and the reason why is because, remember what I said, why do we encounter this problem? Right? The reason we encounter this problem is because we use the trig substitution. We, we introduced that. Right? But where are trig substitutions useful? And the answer is, they're useful in all the cases where you've got these things happening. Right? So you're going to get this same pattern over and over again. It might be like so for sine. For sine, you've, sine is also like, if, if I have sine, like this, yeah. right? the restriction was different. It was negative 3 to 3. But that's okay, because 3 sine three dot exists from negative 3 to 3. So any value you want in there, you can find, yeah. just, just like I can here. Right. Okay. So here it's like, oh, no restriction. That's okay. You picked 10, right? Here, there's a restriction, but the restriction here exactly matches the restriction you would get from the substitution you chose. Okay. So it always marries up like that. Okay. Now, I'm aware, that was a big new idea that maybe you're like, I'm still not quite tracking along with that yet, and that's okay. This took me a long time to understand the first time I did it, okay? But I want this here, and you can ask me questions about it as it settles into your brain a little more, and you have a think about it, okay? <sighs> Exhale, fine. We can progress now, okay? Um, I am gonna write this one line. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't finished the question. Um, I've made this restriction, okay? Um, and I'm going to say, okay, the reason why I'm taking the positive part is because, as I made the argument over there, I have a domain restriction on theta. That means that sec theta is always going to be positive, so you, the absolute value of a positive number is just the number. Okay. 